we just got our first look at actual photos of the 6th Gen Forerunner. You guys may have seen these images floating around the internet of what appears to be a heavily camouflaged 6th Gen Forerunner. Okay, so these photos originated from Car and Driver, uh, which is an automotive magazine based in Michigan. Their employee, Drew Dorian, snagged these photos on his way to work uh, the other day. So Car and Driver is a pretty reputable uh, automotive news magazine. They've been doing this for years. So anytime that we see a spy shot like this that shows up on their website, pretty good chance that it means that it is going to be a new vehicle um, that is coming to lots pretty soon. Car and Driver's headquarters are near Ann Arbor, Michigan, which so happens to be close to a Toyota research and development facility, which is not too far from where these photos were taken. So the chances of this being a new foreigner are pretty high. There are three potential pictures of the new sixth generation foreigner on Car and Driver's website. We'll go ahead and link the article below so you guys can check that out. So it just seems to make sense that now is the time that we are gonna start seeing new foreigners being tested. They just updated the Sequoia, the Tundra, the Tacoma. Foreigner just seems to be the next one on the list. As far as going over these photos, it's good to see that the old Forerunner from these photos looks to have stayed. We have the same antenna in the same place. Our crossbars look to be the same. These bat rear pillars look as if they are the same angle. It looks like we're gonna be getting something similar to the Tacoma where it is just an updated version of our last generation. From this heavily camouflaged photo, it looks pretty good to me. So the first thing I notice is this really large, what appears to be another third brake light or something that stretches across the entire hatch of the new Forerunner. It's very Rivian-esque. I know Rivian's been doing stuff with that and it's been popular, but I don't know. What do you think? Not, not a good look at all. Rivian's gonna stick to their styling. I think Toyota's done a great job with their styling recently, and I hope that is not something that they carry over to the new Foreigner. But who knows, maybe people like it. Um, let us know what you guys think um, if you like this so-called third brake light on the rear hatch of the Foreigner. Another thing that we are very grateful for is from these photos, it appears that this will not be a crossover. It looks like it will be a body on frame truck styling, just like we love and we know coming from Forerunner and Toyota. So as we know, the fifth gen Forerunner has a third window on the side of the car. It appears in this photo that that section is heavily camouflaged where all other windows are open. It seems kind of interesting that they'd have that covered up. Yeah, and something that maybe some of you don't know is the first generation Forerunner had a removable hardtop and for a while it was speculated that you might get a removable hardtop on the sixth generation Forerunner. Now something that Toyota might be doing here is covering this so much that we can't see what they're doing. But I do think it's a little odd that they have that rear window covered, they have that quarter panel window covered, and there's just so much camouflage on the roof of the truck. I personally would love it if there was a removable top. I think that if Forerunner, the Forerunner came out with a new removable hard top, I think I'd pre-order one immediately. I would consider buying one, for sure. <laughs> As we can see here in the pictures, you can still see the antenna that is pretty much standard on all fifth generation Forerunner. So that kind of alludes to the possibility of it still having the hard top that we're used to, but who knows? They put a lot of time into camouflaging the rear. So maybe it'll have a hard top. Maybe it'll have the removable top. I'm personally leaning towards the removable top. I think that'd be sick. Go after those Broncos and Jeeps, but who knows? So because this car is so heavily camouflaged, we can't see everything. But there are some clear indicators that this could be the 6th Gen 4Runner. For example, the shark fin antenna on the top, the pillar placement, the rear end of the car really is 5th Gen 4Runner-esque. And personally, that is a breath of fresh air for me. That is a total relief. I have no complaints with the 5th Gen 4Runner. I love that car. I know the Toyota community loves that car. And so I think if they tried to reinvent the wheel with this sixth gen, it would just cause a lot of tension, a lot of problems. So stick to what you do well. And it looks like they've done that in the silhouette of the of these spy shots that we've seen. So Yeah, let's hope it stays the same or at least similar. So something we do want to touch on is the rolling down rear window on the Forerunner. It's something the Forerunner has always had. It looks like just because of how similar this prototype that they spied testing is, we would assume that it would have the rear window on it. It's something that Toyota owners have always loved. It's on so many of their cars. I personally would love to see it on the sixth generation one. It makes me wish I had a foreigner. <laughs> exactly. 
as would I, I'd love to see it. It's a staple. It's a Toyota staple to have that rear window roll down. And so I think by having that in the new generation would just be a commitment from Toyota to us that they are still sticking to their roots. So obviously we don't see too much from these spy shots, um, but that has gotten us thinking of all the different things that have come out that what the foreigner is going to have, what features it's going to carry, uh, what engine it's going to have. So we want to get into that a little bit with you guys. I mean, I think the first thing that needs to be discussed is what kind of powertrain is this going to come stock with? Are we going to be able to see that four cylinder hybrid that we got in the Tacoma? Or do you think that they're going to stick with the naturally aspirated V6? I think what we can expect to see is them take the entire powertrain over from the Tacoma and put it into the new corner. So they'll have the option between the turbo four cylinder, um, the 2.5 four cylinder, and then also pairing that with a hybrid motor. So we should see from around 200 horsepower to low 300 horsepower with that. I like that. I really appreciate the, the upgrade in horsepower that comes with this hybrid motor, but I have heard that there have been some problems off-road with people not loving that hybrid slash turbo charge thing just based on the power delivery. I know like it would be difficult and I haven't driven a new Tacoma yet so I've, I'm not sure how it would be but I see what you're saying like if you have a turbocharged car you're gonna have a spike in the power curve and going over rocks and stuff and trying to predict that power curve would be kind of difficult so I don't know how it would do off-road honestly and we're Honestly, I might just have to wait and see what that looks like. Do you think you'd drive a hybrid 4Runner if you had the chance to? I really, from, I myself haven't driven the Tacoma, but I have driven one of the new Tundras, which is a twin turbo V6. And I can say that I am blown away and impressed that they could pull that out of a V6. Yeah. So if the new Tacoma slash the new 4Runner is anything like that, I would be more than happy to drive that car. That would be pretty awesome. And I've, from what I've heard, the new Tacoma drives a lot like that new Tundra. So maybe the new Foreigner is just gonna drive like a, a baby Sequoia, if, if that's the case. I honestly think that we've seen a trend that the Tundra came out as well as the Sequoia and the Tundra and the Sequoia are essentially the same. That you could call the Sequoia the Tundra wagon, if you will. So now so, we got our Tacoma wagon. Yeah, exactly. A Tacoma wagon could be the new 4Runner, right? I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you guys think that the Tacoma and the 4Runner are going to stay really similar? Or do you think that this will be a chance for Toyota to separate these two cars more, maybe keeping it with a naturally aspirated V6 or going with some different type of system? So one thing that the new Tacomas came with that is amazing is just like on the last generation we have a locking rear differential but this time there is also a locking center differential as well as a sway bar disconnect what are your thoughts on that i think it's a great move for toyota to start adding these features to the foreigner especially the sway bar disconnect since these vehicles don't come with a front locker um, this is pretty much the best option you're going to get being able to um, disconnect that sway bar is going to give you a lot more traction up front and from what i've heard on the new Tacoma, it's been awesome to have that feature, um, just being able to click a button and disconnect that sway bar. I know from personal experience driving a Tacoma off-road without that sway bar disconnect that sometimes that you have to kind of finagle your way through <laughs> things, right? And so I think that on the new Tacoma, having that sway bar disconnect is a game changer and I hope to see it on the 4Runner as well as the center differential yeah. lock. And with that differential lock, I'm glad that they're keeping that. It's such a useful thing to have on the trails. I know like getting a TRD off-road trim in either the Foreigner or Tacoma, that's the big part about that. It unlocks so many more trails having that locking rear diff. And it's good that we're seeing it in the fourth or sixth generation Foreigner as well. I would hope to see that as well. Well, let's talk old Forerunners. Forerunners have been around for a long time, right? Been and they've been it. known and loved for generations to come. We saw on the first generation 4Runner a movable top and we talked briefly about speculation of that happening on this 4Runner. That would be a great thing that I'd love to see, but also there was something that was on the second generation that is also speculated about. Yeah, so in the second generation 4Runner, they came standard with a swing out, rear tire swing out. And for a while now, it's been speculated that the sixth generation 4Runner will carry that swing out. Something that we do see on these pictures though, which I'm not a fan of is there is no swing out on the back of these <laughs> on these spy shots but it's still early in the development process so maybe we'll see one 
It could um, be offered on some trim levels and not levels. on others. It's already off-road. We'll get right. the, the rear swing out. So Did, would you like to rock the rear swing out in that case? Or? I'm such a fan of a swing out that, They're especially so on a forerunner, to have your tire back there and have more mounting options for a jack or jerry cans. I think coming stock from Toyota to have a Toyota rear swing out it would, would be, be a totally way cool thing it'd be have. great especially if you're upgrading tire sizes now it looks like on here that they just have the standard 265 tires that come stock on most Tacomas and foreigners these days but if you were to upgrade your tires having a rear swing out you could actually fit a rear tire on the back so i think it'd be cool if toyota helping helping aftermarket the aftermarket out by allowing you to just get a swing out straight from the factory i also see in some of these spy shots that it looks like there's some space in the wheel wells i oh, think toyota yeah. knows we're gonna throw <laughs> some bigger tires on there they finally figured it out so huge issue that was on the tacoma and the foreigner like the ones we have back here is you have to do what's called a body mount chop to fit the bigger tires something that we've seen on the new tacoma is they've pushed that space back so it should be easier to fit bigger tires hopefully on the new generation foreigner as well so do you think i'm going to be able to fit 37s on my new maybe, maybe not 37s but 35s <laughs> 35s, 35s, 35s and they'll 35. still look sick so the big controversy as you see behind us the forerunner and the tacoma behind us both have hood scoops but They're as fake. toyota guys know <laughs> They're fake. they are fake. So will the new 4Runner generation like the new Tacoma come with a real functioning hood scoop because of the turbos? It better. I hope so. <laughs> Why have it if it's just for looks? So, Because it looks good. It does look good, but let's actually make it functional for once. Exactly. Um, price range though, what do you think the new 4Runner is going to start at? Because right now we're looking at or low 30s for the current model. Um, the new Tacoma is starting around 32. Do you think that's something they'll carry over with the new Forerunner? I think based on the spike that we saw from the Tacoma previous generation to now, that we will see a price increase. There was nearly a $3,000 increase in price from the third generation Tacoma SR and this generation's SR. It's true. I don't know. I think it'll only be around $2,000, which is still, I mean, inflation, you're still gonna raise the price of these. What I hope is dealerships aren't just marking these up like 20 grand once they start hitting dealer floors, but. I think we'll have to worry about that when we get to the trim models such as the TRD Pro. Pro. And I mean, talking about that, do you think like the Tacoma, the 4Runner will get a Trail Hunter? I hope so. I think the Trail Hunter is sick. I think them coming out with this Trail Hunter is a really cool thing where Toyota is giving us their version of their overlanding car. Let us know what you guys think about what kind of trim models we can expect from the new 4Runner. Are we gonna get a Trail Hunter? I'm sure we'll get a TRD Pro and it's gonna be amazing, but what other trims are gonna come? Is the Limited gonna come back? Is it still gonna be different? <laughs> so bad, <laughs> so much chrome on that thing. Yeah, I think Toyota's finally realized that we uh, we don't like we that. don't like Chrome. We were on the Toyota what website today, and mm -hmm. I noticed that you can black out all the logos now, so they're catching on. They are. So hopefully with you this, can order it from the factory with black logos. So that would be pretty cool. The Trail Hunter, I think it just makes sense for them to bring it over. There's so much adjustability. There's so much in the overlanding community now with Toyotas. I think they'd be missing out if they didn't. I agree. Something that we saw with the new generation Tacoma that we haven't seen with our 4Runner 5th gens was a manual transmission. And that the new cool. Tacoma came with a manual transmission. Do you think with them using probably the same drivetrain that they could give us a manual transmission in our 4Runners? I mean, it would make sense. It would save them a lot of money. They've already done a development for it, right? So I think if the demand is there, they'll definitely come out with a manual option for the 4Runner. I think Who knows, is that it. something you would like? I think I'd appreciate it for sure. I think that I'd appreciate that manual transmission over an automatic. But then again, I know that the, the new transmission that comes in the new generation of the Tacoma it's is so unreal. nice and it's so efficient. No, no more gear hunting. How am I to uh, compete with that manually? Yeah. I know it's like big in the off-road community, whether people choose the automatic or the manual. I mean, I feel like if it comes to me, if I'm trying to focus on getting over a big obstacle, it may just be my lack of experience, but uh, I think the last thing I need to worry about is feathering a clutch. Yeah, I guess that's so, another good point as well. So I it. guess give me my manual transfer, transfer case, case yeah. and let me keep my automatic transmission. Do you think they'll keep 
the manual transfer case? Because every other car in their lineup is switched over. Do you think they'll finally do it? I sure hope so. I think one of my favorite things about this generation, our current fifth gen generation of 4Runners, is that it has that manual transfer case or the option to have yeah. it. And just being able to reach down and change it into what gear that you'd like and be able to feel the vibration, it's it's what we do. It's yeah. what we do with these cars in the overlanding it's community. More, it's almost... It's a more mechanical feeling. You're more... Exactly. You just feel more in one with the car anytime you have a little feature like that. You feel like you're in control. These cars yeah. are getting so nice and there's so many added features that off-roading is getting easier and easier every year. It is. So uh, <laughs> I like the little things that still make me feel like I can control the car. Yeah, that's true. The, our foreigner here behind us has a manual transfer case and that's something I wish that they keep in the sixth generation foreigner. So. For sure. What do you guys think about the manual transfer case and even a manual transmission in a foreigner? Is that something that you would like to see or you'd like them to keep, let us know. The Tacoma, the new Tacoma generation came with a lot of nice new features. One of the biggest things that they advertised was the front driver and passenger seat having their TRD so the Pro shocks. seats or the shock seats shock as everybody seats. calls them. I've not, I haven't had any experience with them off-road so I don't really know they look crazy. if they make a big difference or not. I don't know. From what I've heard, sounds like they do but I think we'll just have to get in one and actually find out. Do you think they'll add it to this though? I think that it would be almost silly of them not to add it to the TRD Pro version, right? Or the TRD Trail Hunter. I think it'd be hard because the Tacoma, there's like no leg room in the back now with these. And this is like a family car. That's true. The 4 is could more fit of a family it? car. I think because of the platform of the 4Runner naturally being bigger than the Tacoma, I think yeah. honestly they could justify those seats more than the new Tacoma can. That is true. Tacoma, those seats, I don't know how people fit back there. I, I think it'd be cool. If they found a way to make this work, go for it. Something else that's cool about the new Tacoma that hopefully we'll see in the new 4Runner are molly panels. Oh, I mean, We saw one at our local dealership and how many molly panels did it have in it? We saw an SR5. Super base long model. Bottom, <laughs> very base model Tacoma at a local dealership. And there were all different types of accenting with molly panel systems. That's something that we've done in our 4Runner and Tacomas to add for extra space for mounting gear. And I think that especially on the higher trim models, such as the That'd TRD Pro, or if they do a Trail Hunter, be awesome. that they will have lots of molly panel options for us. Toyota... And you have more room to work with in that. Oh, Think of how sure. many more you could add. <laughs> for sure, you could add more. You could add molly panels on your molly panels. Yeah. What do you guys think as far as molly panels go? Do you use them? Are you a fan of them off-road? Would you like to see built-in molly panels in your 6 Gen 4Runner? Is that why there's no third window on the new one is are they replacing that whole sidewall with a molly panel that would be crazy if they did that for sure i think it would look great personally hey more molly panels more storage right so. exactly i like that third window and i know it brings in a little bit extra light and some yeah. extra visibility but honestly the majority of the forerunners that get built out for overlanding you, can't use that you cover window. that <laughs> window up anyway with a molly panel on the exterior so yeah. why not just have a big molly panel on the inside. I'd like to see it as an option for sure. That way you can just customize it whether you need it or not. Yeah, overall I think it I think it looks great. I'm excited for the four, or sixth generation 4Runner. I think that the sixth generation 4Runner is gonna be a total hit. Personally, coming from driving 4Runners a lot, the fifth gen 4Runner is great. I love the platform, I love platform. the interior. It's an amazing vehicle and I know everybody that owns one loves them. I think with the new generation, if they stick to the similar routes and just give us a little bit more horsepower, people will have nothing but good things to say about the 6 Gen 4Runner. But what are some of your thoughts? What are some of the things that you've been thinking about the new 4Runner? What are some things that could happen? Or what have we said today that you think no way is going to happen? Please let us know down in the comments and let us know if you have any other questions for us. Thank you so much for watching.